Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Boss wanted to give me a break from doing my job, and handed my duties off to someone else who didn't know what they were doing. When SH inevitably hit the fan, I took no part in cleaning it up, since I need a break. The second story. Boss told me because I was one minute late, he was taking 15 minutes off of my time, so I didn't work for 15 minutes. People saw me and I accidentally triggered a wave of malicious compliance in my coworkers. The third story, paralegal discovers she is eligible for eight weeks of short-term disability, returns with proper paperwork. Boss now has to do 10 weeks of extra work. The first story is, you don't want me to do my job? Okay, I won't. Background. I worked for a company many years ago before I got into my current career. I worked at this company for 8 years, starting at 16 in high school. I worked my A off daily and quickly climbed into a position of management, and was very well liked and well respected by anyone above me or below me. During my last year of employment, I had a new boss. We'll call her Mary. She wasn't my main boss, she was the penician beneath him. Her and I got along really well, but there were many instances of her stepping on my toes. One of my main duties that was exclusively my responsibility was maintaining the sales floor. I communicated with vendors and with buyers. I kept track of all product being distributed to our store and planned accordingly. I planned all, creative might I add, displays in the store and maintained them, ordered all needed products for displays and handled all holiday distributions, displays, orders, etc. October rolls around and I start developing my holiday plan. Mary keeps a close eye on my plans and asks a lot of questions, but she doesn't get in my way. Thanksgiving is over and we're halfway done. My plan was a success so far, and I'm on track with the amount of product I've been bringing in and the amount of product left on the sales floor based on previous year's numbers, and how much we're projected to sell of everything. It's a couple weeks until Christmas and I'm in the middle of pulling last year's numbers to start my big Christmas order. Mary comes in and sees what I'm doing and says, OP, don't worry about that. I'm gonna have Amy write the order. I'm immediately confused and annoyed and ask her why she thinks it's a good idea to have Amy, the store receiver, write the order when I'm the person who's been doing it the entire time and has been working all the product and I know what's been moving and what hasn't. She gives me a BS answer, something like you've been doing so much and I wanna take some of the stress off of you. Instead of explaining to her that this move will in fact increase my stress exponentially, I just close out my tabs on the computer and smile and say, okay then, thanks. Amy writes the order and after we get it in, I can tell by looking at the pallets that it's going to be an SH show. For example, way too much of random product we don't need and aren't going to sell through until next holiday season at least. Also not nearly enough of our fast movers, and not enough to maintain current displays. Here comes my malicious compliance. Instead of breaking down these pallets into the designated area of the back room in an organized and intentional manner, like I've done with all of my previous orders every single year, I just leave it on the pallets wrapped in shrink wrap. The products stay like that for days and I continue to ignore it. Eventually someone, maybe Amy, doubt it though, breaks it all down and there's stuff all over the place and you can't find anything you need without moving stuff around. Next I allowed all my holiday displays to go to SH. Normally I would have ordered to maintain them, but no, Mary wants to give me a break so I let them burn. Mary and our big boss take note of this and scramble to figure things out themselves. Next we're completely out of essentials that Amy didn't order enough of. And now it's too late and too close to the holiday for the warehouse to send us any more. Mary and Big Boss are dealing with angry customers who are taking their business elsewhere. Finally, the holidays are over, and our back room is full of stuff that's going to stay back here for quite a long time. All stuff left over from Amy's SH order. Am I going to palletize an inventory and periodically work all that product? Nope, because Mary thinks I need a break. Edit. Since I didn't make it clear enough, based on the first comment I got, this was malicious compliance, because I continued to do the rest of my normal job duties with 100% effort like always. I simply passed on the holiday duties to whoever else because that is what Mary wanted. Mary had a history of stepping on my toes and going over my head, and making decisions on my behalf, and her telling me she wanted to take some of my stress away was her telling me, I don't want you to do this very important task, so I'm gonna have someone else do it who I think is more qualified. This has happened several times throughout the nine or so months we had worked together at that point. She frequently doubted my abilities, questioned my judgment, and tried to get other people to do things that were my responsibility. 
I always let it go or explained it to her and things would be fine for a while then she'd do it again. This time I had enough and decided to let her find out what happens when she doesn't trust me to do something. Edit. Forgot to include Fallout. Amy just got thrown into a situation she couldn't handle. She wasn't equipped to handle the job and I do feel bad that Mary put that responsibility on her. And Amy probably had to deal with the guilt of failing so badly. Mary on the other hand was chewed out. Once as far as I know, by supervision when they paid a visit to the store and noted the horrible displays and empty shelves on holiday cooking essentials. That and lots of complaints from customers too. I tried not to rub it in her face, but I'll admit I let a few I would have done it this way comments slip. Amy just having zero clue about what the task would entail and subsequently didn't do any research into prior year's sales. She basically just went into it blind and was probably feeling good about herself since Mary specifically asked her to do such a big job. Edit. I still don't understand what Mary was thinking. She just feels like it and caused a mess? My best guess is she was thinking, wow, this pre-Christmas order is super important and will be the sole determining factor in whether or not we have product for our customers and don't have excess product going into the new year. Hmm, let's not have the person who always does it do it because she's only 23 and has no life experience. Instead, let's have Amy do it who's completely unequipped to handle the task and will inevitably fail, reflecting badly on the store and on myself. Something like that. The next story is... Boss says if you're one minute late I'm docking 15 minutes from your time. Gets mad when I don't work the 15 minutes I was docked for free. This happened about four years ago. I do construction and we start very early. Boss got tired of people walking in at 6.05 or 6.03 when we start at 6. Even though he was a few minutes late more consistently than any one of us were. So he said, if you aren't standing in front of me at 6 o'clock when we start, then I'm docking 15 minutes from your time for the day. The next day I accidentally forgot my tape measure in my car and had to walk back across the job site to grab it. Made it inside at 6.0. Boss chewed me out and told me he was serious yesterday and docked me 15 minutes. So I took all my tools off right there and sat down on a bucket. He asked why I wasn't getting to work, and I said, I'm not getting paid until 6.15, so I'm not doing any work until 6.15. I enjoy what I do, but I don't do it for free. He tried to argue with me until I said, if you're telling me to work without paying me, then that's against the law. You really want to open the company and yourself up to that kind of risk? Maybe I'm the kind to sue, maybe I'm not. But if you keep on telling me to work after you dock my time, then we're going to find out one way or the other. He shut up pretty quickly after that, and everyone else saw me do it and him cave. So now they weren't going to take his crap either. Over the next few days, guys that would have been one or two minutes late just texted the boss, Hey, sorry, boss. Would have been there at 6.02 and gotten docked, so I'll see you at 6.15 and I'll get to work then. And then sat in their cars until 6.15 and came in when their time started. So between people doing what I did or just staying in their cars instead, he lost a ton of productivity and morale because he decided that losing 15 minutes of productivity per person and feeling like a big man was better than losing literally one or two minutes of productivity, even though everyone stands around BSing and getting material together for the day until about 6.10 anyway. After a few weeks of that, he got chewed out by his boss over the loss of productivity and how bad the doc timesheets were looking and reflecting poorly on him as a leader because we were missing deadlines over it and it showed that he doesn't know how to manage his people. And then suddenly his little self-implemented policy was gone and we all worked like we were supposed to and caught back up fairly quickly. Worker solidarity for the win. Not one person took his crap and worked that time for free after he tried to swing his weight around on them. But obviously, I was a target after that and only made it two more months before he had stacked up enough BS reasons to get away with firing me when I called in a few days in a row, after my mom fell, and I took off work to take care of her and monitor her for a while during the day. Edit. Boss sent out a group text saying that you guys need to plan your days better so you're not missing work or leaving early during crunch time. I and another employee sent back stuff along the lines of, you need to plan your jobs better so that there isn't a crunch time, or that one person leaving early or being unable to stay late for unplanned overtime doesn't jeopardize the project's progress. He didn't like that, but knew we weren't going to budge, so he just didn't reply. Bonus story. Had a 62-year-old boss at a different company when I first started construction that had to show up at the shop in the mornings, and he expected everyone to get there early and load the work trucks up so we could leave right when our time started. Argued with him about it, and he went on a tangent about how my millennial generation didn't know how to do what's best for the company and how we don't want to work. So I just stopped showing up early. I'd walk in two minutes before time started and he knew he couldn't chew me out because I wasn't late. He also expected us to unload after we got back, but had us clock out when we left the job site. Not when we got back to the shop and were done unloading. I didn't do that either. 
That's when I started seriously looking into labor laws and regulations in my area to see what my rights were, and what was legal and wasn't legal that they were doing. Didn't last long there either. Apparently I'm considered something of an instigator or organizer in a lot of my old companies because I tell and told co-workers what their rights are as workers, when they're getting screwed over. The last story is... Need another doctor's note? No problem. My, 23 male, mother, 51 female, is a paralegal at a pretty big law firm. Each attorney has several paralegals under them, and one of them is the manager of the rest. If one paralegal is out, the manager takes up their work as well as their own. My mom had the same manager for several years and never once had any issues. This year, OG manager retired, and back in May, her new manager was brought in from another section. To say this new manager, we will call her Nancy Mancy, was a B would be an understatement. Nancy immediately changed almost every single policy and micromanaged every single task. She constantly had sly remarks and would tattletale every single slip up to the attorney. This got so bad the attorney actually told the entire section he doesn't want to hear about any more workplace drama or small slip ups at all. Now that the stage is set onto the buildup, my mom found out she had a small tumor on her ovary that needed to be checked and removed. Biopsy was taken and found out it's not cancerous and can be removed with little to no issue. The doctor told her it would be a one day recovery. She went to Nancy and asked for the two days off. No problem, just bring a doctor's note. My mom got the doctor's note and turned it in without issue. Three days prior to the actual operation, they do her pre-op and find out that it can't be removed as easily, and she has to have a partial hysterectomy. Now her doctor says it's going to be about two weeks bed rest. Mom informs Nancy. Nancy is peeved and says she needs another doctor's note. No problem. My mom calls her doctor's office and they use a program to edit the existing one for, say, two weeks, instead of two days. They fax it to my mom and she gives it to Nancy. Now, the program medical facilities use to edit these types of documents is also used by paralegals. Nancy sees this note and immediately accuses my mom of editing the document herself just to get more time off. She then demands to have the doctor's office number. My mom calls them and explains the situation. The nurse talks to Nancy and agrees to get a new note made. Here's the MC. Nancy demands my mom go in and get the original and not a fax copy. Nancy states we need the original since this whole situation has been shady. We're gonna do this by the books. My mom goes to the doctor's office clearly peeved off. When she gets there, the nurse tells her she's entitled to eight weeks of state short-term disability. She immediately fills out all the paperwork and takes it to her local disability office. Because of the short time frame, it's pushed through. The next day, she returns to work with her note for two weeks off and her eight weeks disability paperwork. Nancy is peeved. My mom just says he wanted this done by the book. This is what the book says I get. Now Nancy had to do 10 weeks of extra work, just because she gave my mom a hard time about doing two weeks of extra work. Since my mom has been back, Nancy has given her no problems at all. Edit as requested, just a little info on my mom. She's in great health now. This took place in May of this year. She made a full recovery. I said she had to have a partial hysterectomy in the post, but left out how this was the second one. So technically she's at a full now. She's strong and very patient. Hit the like button to support the channel and subscribe. Have a good day.